It's the final of the WTA finals in Riyadh. And this year we have no Sabalenka or Iga, the big favourites and the ones people were expecting to be there. And instead we have the young guns on the WTA tour. It is the youngster Coco Goff versus King Wenzheng. And here we go. If you look at the race, you can see the top eight players, uh, discluding, of course, Emma Navarro and including Krajcikova, who won Wimbledon and qualified. But they're the youngest. 20 years and six months for Coco Goff, 22 years for King Wing Zheng. Everyone else is kind of, well, you've got eager 23, but mainly sort of 25 and upwards. And this is a really positive move for women's tennis that we have the two best in the final being the two youngest. And I think we're going to see many battles between these two players in the future. Um, we've seen King Wing Zheng coming close to a Grand Slam. We've seen Coco Goff win the US Open. And this final should be very exciting. Uh, combined, it is 42 years and 271 days. They make history as the youngest final at the WTA final since 04, when it was Sharapova defeating Serena Williams. So that should bode well, of course, two of the biggest name names in women's tennis. And I think I'm going to start with the Coco Goff match because she defeated the big favourite Sabalenka. I think me and Ben both predicted Sabalenka to win this tournament. With Iga, there was that expectation that she may go out and, and suffer here. We both thought that was a real possibility. She's not been playing many matches, change of coach, uh, going for a bit of a transitional phase. Of course, her base level is outstanding and she could have easily gone on and won this tournament uh, despite not being 100% because she's that good. But this was never going to be her tournament. And um, Sabalenka, I really thought it was going to be hers. But Coco reaches the final of the WTA finals for the first time. She leads the head-to-head -head with Arena 5-4, which surprised me. I didn't realise it was 4 all going into this one. Um, it says here she's rebuilt her confidence these, these last few months. Has been nothing short of inspiring. Third win over world number one. And... Fantastic year. She's really developing Coco Goff into being a fantastic player. You'd expect her to be challenging next year for all of the slams again. And I don't know. I feel like she is a big favourite coming into this final. I think she's got a really good chance to beat King Wing Zheng. Uh, speaking about, obviously, that match, Coco Goff and King Wing Zheng will face each other in the championship match. Coco leads the head 1-1 one, one love. The only time they played was on clay earlier this year. Uh, Coco struggled a bit during the North American hardcourt swing, but she's completely reset and is playing some of the best tennis of her career. I think at the moment, she's in her best stage of the season as well. I think she has played a lot of tournaments and she's the only one who seems to not be struggling with so much fatigue. All of the other names in this whole tournament you didn't really fancy. Rabakina certainly not looking great. Uh, Krachikova, massive shout out to her. She's been fantastic. And it's a very bizarre season for Barbara Krachikova. Um, I wasn't expecting her to do anything. I wasn't expecting her to win Wimbledon like nobody was. And she just seems to be surprising people on the tour constantly and all the fans. So really good season. She's going to end it inside the top 10 now. And fair play to her. King Wing Zheng though, Brilliant. It's her breakout season. Uh, she's been equally as good, if not better, than Coco Goff in the second half of the year. She won Palermo, Olympic gold, Wuhan final, Tokyo champion. Uh, both have won two tour-level titles this year. Both have 50-plus match wins this year, just showing how many matches they've played and won. And both are playing their first WTA Finals championship match. And I do believe we are going to see these two playing more regular in finals because that they are very, very top, top athletes. Uh, speaking about Sabalenka's loss, we're going to see what Coco Goff said. But my assessment of it was, it wasn't the highest of, of quality matches. I think Coco Goff was the better player. It went to a tie break in the first, um, and it was a really good start to that tie break from Coco. The second set, though, Sabalenka just got worse. The unforced errors were crazy from her. 
Uh, let me see if I can pull up some stats. So, yeah, 47 unforced errors for Sabalenka to only 14 winners. Uh, 14 winners for Coco Goff, but 27 unforced errors. So 20 less unforced for Coco. The numbers don't lie. It was a lot of mistakes of both rackets, uh, just Sabalenka making more of them. And when she does that, that's the only time she loses because Sabalenka, with her power, will be able to beat pretty much everyone. So if the errors are there, she's beatable. If not, she will She will um, obviously go on to win pretty much every match. So this is what uh, Coco said. Anyway, so I'm happy with how I played. I just know going against Alina is going to be tough. I just tried to stay in it. She's world number one for a reason. I'm just happy with how I play today. And on facing King Wing Zheng on the final, she said she's playing great tennis, just playing confident tennis. Will help give me the best shot at winning. I'm not really nervous, to be honest. I always consider year-end finals just a plus. Being here is a reward for the season that I had. And I think this confidence, lack of nerves going into the final, may be enough just to give her the edge. And um, this is a good one as well from Bastion. And that is players to defeat Eager and Sabalenka in the same event since they held number one and number two in the rankings. We had Klachikova in 23, Rabakina in 23, and now Coco Goff in the tour finals. It is not an easy thing to do at all. And I don't think many people will be repeating that in the next few years because in the same tournament to beat, beat both of them, is very, very, very unlikely. Uh, this girl, though, will be hoping she can do it next year. King Wing Zheng, she becomes the first Chinese player, man or woman, to win 50 matches in a single season. She is just a, one of the most popular uh, people, I would say, not just women, but people in China right now. Having a gold medal in China, as we know, carries so much weight. On top of that, she is doing extremely well on the WTA Tour and winning tournaments and matches regularly. So, uh, really good professional performance. It was against Klachikova. She beat her 6-3-7-5. Uh, King Wing was 6-3-3-love three, three, up, but Barbara made her work for it. And Barbara just dug in. She was so hungry. I was expecting her to just be a little bit grateful just to be there kind of thing. Collect the paycheck, hit a few balls, and lose every match wasn't to be she turned up she played to win uh played probably the best i've seen her since wimbledon and for a moment i thought she was going to go and win this tournament that's how good she looked in spells but she's had a really good solid end to the year like i said olympic gold us open quarter final beijing semi-final wuhan final tokyo champion you add the final the wta finals to the list she's going to be sixth well, that is her sixth top 10 win of 2024, and she's way inside the top 10 now, and yeah, flying in the rankings. Let's get to the prediction. Let's bring an image up of the two of them. Um, yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Coco Goff, the younger of the two. King Wing Zheng with a really good serve and full of confidence. Coco Goff, I feel probably even more confident because she's not putting too much pressure. She will be the bookie's favourite. I see this one going to three sets. I think we're going to see a really good match between these two. But I fancy the American Coco Goff to win in three sets. And I think the third set's going to be a strong one. I'm expecting 6-2 in the third. But there we go. That is my prediction for the WTA Finals. Let me know yours in the comment section below. Uh, sorry if it was a little bit long, but there was a lot to go through. And I am a little bit excited for this one because it's not what I was expecting. And I feel when you get the unexpected on the women's tour, it adds that extra element of excitement. And having the two youngest players there just shows that the sport has a really good future. Hopefully the WTA can do more with the marketing and promotion and I think we're in good hands. Uh, but let me know your thoughts for the final in the comment section below. And if you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe if you're new and I'll see you soon.